are you struggling to figure out what kind of work you want to do as an INFJ? Or have you ever struggled with what kind of work you should do if you're the INFJ personality? I just wanted to share my own personal experience today to encourage you. I remember being in high school, thinking about what I was going to do for college and having a bunch of interests. And I think that comes with the territory of being an INFJ because we are curious and we get interested in a lot of things. And if you've had some time to look back on your life, you probably noticed that there were chunks of time, two, three years, maybe more, maybe less, that you were interested in something and you really dove into it deeply, understood it well, developed some kind of mastery until you got curious in something else and you moved on to another thing. And that doesn't mean that you can't do a couple things at one time, but it's a tendency to get into a variety of different things, whether you're doing them concurrently or at separate times. That's very typical of INFJs just because we're super curious people and we really like to dive into something and and get our heads around it, especially if it's a creative venture or something that just piques our interest. So that was the case for me. When I was in high school, I remember really being interested in living things and catching animals and identifying different species. I remember enjoying playing guitar and and writing, fishing, a variety variety of different things. I, I definitely liked people. I liked helping people work through challenges that were in front of them, problem solve, smooth out relationships, find peace, get along better, that sort of thing. So I had a variety of interests. Some were more teaching bent, some were more counseling bent, some were more um, environmental biology bent, science bent. Um, I enjoyed history. And maybe when you look back to school, if you had a good school experience, experience, which a lot of INFJs do, you could think, oh, I, I enjoyed most of the things I did and I did pretty well in them. And that's not the case for everybody, but I think typically INFJs do pretty well in school because they're quick to pick up on new topics and tend to want to please the teacher. So that combination of things works out well for INFJs who are figuring things out. So all that backstory to say, when it came to college, I felt like I enjoyed and was decent at a number of different things. So I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. And I felt like when I chose something, I was pigeonholing myself and I wasn't sure what to do. I'd gotten good feedback on being a writer and I had some experience teaching. My family was a bunch of teachers really. So that seemed like an option as well. And I did enjoy sharing and helping other people learn what I'd explored. That was really fun. Figure something else, figure something out and then teach someone else how to do it. I enjoyed that for sure. So I had uh, several different options in my mind and, and, you know, counseling was always an option as well. I wasn't sure which one to do. And I ended up going with teaching and doing that just because it was the most practical option. I like to learn. I like to tell other people about it. The classroom management part, that was challenging for me. So I, I moved through college and actually really enjoyed college because it was like the perfect environment. I could learn a bunch of things, uh, write about them, it, and I could do it in a quiet environment. It was, it was so awesome. And then I got into the real world and I'm managing a classroom of students. And that was super, super challenging for me. I mean, I still enjoyed the learning, but it felt like most of what I was doing was taking care of a ton of tasks all at the same time, spending a bunch of energy, meeting people's demands and making fast decisions over and over and over again. And it was really overwhelming. Plus there are, you know, other students who were more determined and strong-willed than I was pressing back on me because they wanted to know what the boundaries were. And typically I wanted to do what worked for everybody rather than just hold a firm line. So it was a a challenging road and I wondered if I'd made the right decision for a long time. Plus I looked around me at the other teachers and I felt like I didn't really fit the mold. So that launched me into trying to figure out who I was and why I was doing everything. And then I come to find out about Myers-Briggs personality from my mother-in-law who is an INFJ as well, got into that thought I was a variety of personalities. When I found out I was an INFJ, that changed a lot of things. I'm like, oh, that's why I do what I do. And that's that's what I'm motivated. And I'm still enjoying learning about what makes me tick and what, definitely what makes other people tick as well. So in that process, I thought, well, maybe I'll help other people understand this. Uh, and I should back up and say prior to that, I had really gotten in set to music and was taking some guitar lessons to understand the theory behind it and songwriting and enjoyed writing lyrics. So I, I'd done that and really probably spent too much money on like an electric electric guitar and other guitar gear 
um, but was enjoying playing music with friends. And then I learned about personality and I thought, oh man, it'd be really cool to, to start a blog. I'd, I'd love to share and teach other people these ideas via writing. Uh, and then that led to a podcast. I loved doing the podcasting. It was uh, such a smooth transition from all the music exploration that I'd done and like GarageBand on my Mac and it just tied in really nicely. So I started messing around with podcasts. And then I was learning as I was blogging about how people were able to reach other audiences with videos. So I thought, man, it would be it'd be neat to put some stuff up on YouTube. And I saw that there were some people way back when I started who'd done some INFJ videos that had done well and just kind of stopped. So I thought there's a, this is a great opportunity to to reach some people and help other people. So I got started there and that grabbed my interest as well. And then even circling back around in, in the classroom, I've been moving all throughout. I started out helping small groups of students with literacy. And then I moved into fifth grade where I taught math. And then I taught everything in fifth grade for a year. And then that led to third grade, mainly because of like some classroom management challenges. I moved to third grade, really enjoyed that. I did that for like eight years. I enjoyed parts of that, I should say. I enjoyed the relationships with the kids, but the content wasn't quite as deep as I really wanted it to be. And then in sixth grade, I had the opportunity to move to sixth grade after eight years, which I'm currently doing right now. And this, I think this is my fourth year doing this for the first, no, maybe it's my, this is like my fifth year, I think. For the first three years, I taught just writing and grammar. And that was really cool because I loved writing and grammar and I learned grammar a whole lot better. I really enjoyed that. Oh, but that position kind of dissolved and I was moved with the rest of the sixth grade teachers to the middle school because my district just finished building a new middle school. So now I'm the STEM teacher there. <laughs> figure probably STEM is, while it's interesting and it has a lot of opportunities for fun exploration, it's something I would never thought I'd enjoy doing, but it's been enjoyable. So just to throw that out at you, while you, if you ever have thought about teaching or being a public school educator or any kind of educator, the classroom management part is is pretty overwhelming, but it, it's really nice in that the schedule affords you a lot of opportunities to explore on your own because I have to be there for my current job at 7.15, 7.20. By the end of the day, I can go at three. Now there's stuff I need to do outside of the work hours for sure, but I definitely have summers off. And again, I'm, I'm learning and I'm helping other people. So it's a pretty good gig. And the other part that's been neat is I can bounce around um, to different positions and still maintain my level of seniority and the pay and, and the benefits and everything. So if you've ever thought about it, it's a, a pretty cool gig. Of course, schools are quite interesting now with all this social emotional stuff that's, that's going on. But um, it's been a, a pretty neat thing because I can still do that and it gives me opportunities to explore other things as well. But I share that because I know a lot of people as INFJs have just kept exploring different things. And if, if you feel like that's messed up or wrong or whatever you need to do obviously what works for you and your family and your financial situation during different times and that that requires wisdom but i think it's okay to to jump around and explore and i'd say it's typical um i i failed to mention i also enjoyed with making the videos and the blogging and the podcasting that the entrepreneurial route doing something where i was working for myself was really enjoyable too and i think a lot of infjs really desire that at least in the long run and, and end up doing that on some level at some time not all of them but certainly a large number really enjoy the idea of working for themselves quietly at home creating something that helps and benefits other people so that's typical i've looked at the lives of a number of infjs and it's, it's so funny like I, I just looked at somebody the other day and he started out playing music and then from there he went to counseling and then he taught at the counseling school and then he started running his own business. And I'm probably forgetting a step, but I could just relate to so many of those parts of his life. If you haven't already checked it out, a good book to look at is Do What You Are. In that book, you'll find uh, all the 16 Myers-Briggs personality types, but you will find the INFJ in there. And the authors, Tigger and Tigger, it's a married couple, discuss, <clears throat> excuse me, discuss three INFJs and they just talk about the work that those people do and why it works for them according to the personality type. It's really interesting. I, I think you might find a lot of um, connections and ahas related to your personality. But I just wanted to encourage you today that it's okay to bounce around and share a little bit about education and some of the opportunities it affords you. Because if, if you're interested in that, it can be, while challenging, it can be um, a really good job in that it, 
gives you a lot of opportunities to explore outside of education while still doing something that is probably a good fit. And, and it can be draining as well, but but typically gives you a lot of other freedoms too. I would love to hear about your career paths or career conundrums in the comments. I think we can really encourage one another and help each other out. So if you have uh, your own stories or your own challenges, would you throw those down in the comments below? I would love to, to check them out and read them. I'll see you next time.